the Stafford Voice. Profiles in History. On March 2nd, 1781, he wrote to each of the 13 states, quote, By the act of Congress, herewith, enclosed your excellency, will be informed that the Articles of Confederation and Perpetual Union between the 13 United States are formally and finally ratified by all the states. We are happy to congratulate our constituents on this important event, desired by our friends, but dreaded by our enemies. Now, Samuel Huntington was born on July 16, 1731, in Wyndham, Connecticut. He had a limited education, never moving on to college. At the age of 16, he was apprenticed to a cooper to learn how to make barrels. During this time, he also helped his father on the farm. But he just wasn't satisfied. So, when he finished his apprenticeship, at the age of 22, he began to study law not at a college or university, but he was self-educated at a library and through some books he would borrow from friends. Now, this paid off when in 1754 he was admitted to the bar and began practicing law in Norwich, Connecticut. That library he studied at, well, it belonged to a gentleman by the name of Reverend Ebenezer Devotion. And, well, let's just say law wasn't the only thing that caught his mind. In 1761, he married Ebenezer's daughter, Martha Devotion. Now, they never had children of their own, but when his, when, uh, when his brother died, he adopted his niece and nephew and treated them as if they were their own. Now, Huntington began his career in politics in 1764 when Norwich sent him to the lower house of the Connecticut Assembly as a representative. He continued serving the office each year until 1774. One year later, he was elected to the upper house, the governor's council, that is, where he would be re-elected until 1784. Now, in 1773, he was appointed to the colony's Supreme Court, later becoming chief justice of the Superior Court from 1784 to 87. As a result for being an outspoken critic, of the coercive acts of the British Parliament, the Assembly elected him in October 1775 to be one of their delegates to the Second Continental Congress. Samuel voted for and signed the Declaration of Independence, and three years later, he replaced John Jay as President of Congress. In addition to, he also voted for and signed the Articles of Confederation. And when they went into effect in 1781, he became the first president of the United States Congress under them. On July 9, 1781, his health forced him to resign and return back to Connecticut. In 1785, he was elected as lieutenant governor, later being elected governor in 86 where he would continue to be re-elected until his death. Now, in 1788, Huntington presided over the Connecticut Convention that was called to ratify the United States Constitution. He was so well-liked, he received two electoral votes in the first presidential election in 1789. Now, true, everyone knew Washington would win, but the vice president's spot was still up for grabs. Now, on January 5th, 1796, at the age of 65, Samuel Huntington died in his home in Norwich, Connecticut. And that is this week's Profiles in History. <laughs>